Jelly Bean Story Page The House of Gable Gable and the Old Woman Who Lived There In a small town surrounded by rolling hills, there stood a house at the end of Gable Gable Street. The house was known simply as the House of Gable Gable. It was old, with creaky wooden floors, windows that rattled in the wind, and ivy that climbed up its walls like reaching hands. For as long as anyone could remember, the house had been there, and so had the old woman who lived inside. No one knew her name, but the children called her Granny Gable. She always wore a long, black shawl and never left the house except after sunset, when the light was dim, and shadows danced in the streets. Her eyes seemed to glow in the dark, and some swore they saw strange, flickering lights in her windows at night. Rumor had it that the house was haunted, and the old woman knew secrets about ghosts and ghouls. One chilly October afternoon, three friends, Lily, Max, and Owen, dared each other to go near the house. It was Halloween season, and stories about the house had gotten scarier than ever. I bet she's a witch, Max whispered, his eyes wide with excitement. Owen shivered. What if she catches us? Lily, who was braver than the boys, put her hands on her hips. We'll just peek through the windows. We'll be fine. Come on. As they crept closer, the wind seemed to whisper their names, and the trees bent toward them, casting long, crooked shadows. The house loomed above them like a sleeping giant, its dark windows watching their every move. They reached the porch, and the creaky steps groaned under their weight. Suddenly, the door creaked open with a loud, eerie squeak. The three froze. Had the door opened by itself? Or had Granny Gable been expecting them? Before they could turn to run, they heard a soft, raspy voice. Come inside, little ones. The door opened wider, and standing in the shadows was Granny Gable herself. Her face was pale, her hair wild like wisps of smoke, and her smile. Oh, that smile. It curled up in the most unsettling way, as if she knew things they didn't. We. We should go, Owen stammered, backing away, but Lily stood her ground. We're not scared. Lily announced, though her voice trembled. The old woman tilted her head. Not scared, eh? Well, then, come see what's inside the house. Against their better judgment, the three friends stepped through the doorway. The air inside was cold and smelled of dust and old books. Strange symbols covered the walls, and there was a soft hum, as though the house itself was alive. In the corner of the room stood a large cauldron, bubbling with a thick, green liquid. The old woman motioned to it, her fingers long and bony. Would you like to taste? She asked. Max gulped. No, thank you. But Granny Gable's smile only widened. It's not for eating. It's for seeing. The friends exchanged nervous glances. Seeing what? Lily asked cautiously. Your greatest fears, the old woman whispered. Step closer, and you'll see what haunts you most. Owen shook his head and tried to back away, but the door had slammed shut behind them. The house seemed to close in, the walls pressing closer. No need to be afraid, Granny Gable purred. The cauldron only shows what's already inside your mind. Before any of them could protest, Lily found herself standing in front of the cauldron, gazing into the green, swirling liquid. Her heart raced as the mist began to form shapes, a tall, shadowy figure with glowing red eyes. It reached for her, its fingers like icy claws. With a scream, she stumbled back. It's... It's the monster from my dreams. Max, feeling braver, leaned in next. As he peered into the cauldron, the liquid bubbled and changed again. This time, it revealed a dark, endless forest. Max saw himself running through the woods, branches grabbing at him, voices whispering in the darkness. I'm lost, Max gasped, his voice trembling. I can't get out. Owen refused to look, but Granny Gable's eyes locked on him. Don't you want to see? Owen shook his head furiously. No. I don't want to know. But the old woman's laugh filled the room. You already know, child. Your fear is not of the dark or of monsters. Your fear is of being forgotten. The air in the room grew colder, and the cauldron bubbled even more furiously, the mist swirling out and filling the space around them. Shapes moved within it, creatures, shadows, the things nightmares were made of. We have to get out of here, Lily cried pulling at the door, but Granny Gable stood in front of them, her glowing eyes narrowing. You can't leave, she whispered. Not until you face your fears. Lily, Max, and Owen huddled together, their hearts pounding. Just when it seemed like the shadows would swallow them whole, Owen, with a burst of courage, shouted, We're not afraid anymore. The mist froze, and the room went silent. Granny Gable's smile faltered. 
Not afraid? Owen stepped forward, his voice steady. You can't scare us. Fear only works if we let it. The old woman glared at them, but her power seemed to fade. The cauldron's bubbling slowed, and the swirling mist began to disappear. Granny Gable's voice was no longer smooth and confident. It was shaky and weak. You'll regret this, she muttered, but before their eyes, she and the house began to dissolve into nothing but dust and wind. The door creaked open, and the three friends rushed outside. When they turned back, the house of Gable Gable was gone, vanished as though it had never been there. Breathing heavily, they stood in the middle of the street, the moon shining down on them. Was that real? Max asked, his voice shaking. Lily nodded slowly. I think so. Owen grinned. But we beat it. We face our fears. And from that night on, the house of Gable Gable and its old woman were never seen again. But if you listen closely on a windy night, you might still hear the faint, raspy voice of Granny Gable whispering from the shadows, don't be afraid. Because fear only has power if you let it.